Hey Tony, it's Saturday because Thursday was New Year's Eve and we were all over the place and Friday. Christmas Eve? Christmas Eve and we were all over the place and uh. We're still all over the place. Yesterday was Christmas and we were also all over the place so I'm making this video on Saturday this week but I talked to you bad so there's no big deal there. Um, so first off to answer your question of the week, I think you're definitely more of a planner, Tony. Um, predominantly because, like, when you showed me those notes, I actually made the joke, Tony, I'm not that much of a planner. Also, Tony has 25 plus pages of notes for his game. You're a planner, Tony. There's, there's no way around that. <laughs> um, uh, so what I want to talk about this week is going to be... A little bit depressing, but not overwhelmingly so. It's not as, like, deep as the video I was planning on making the other day. But it's just something I really want to talk about. And that is... Well, in part, it's based on the stimulus package that that uh, the government has been messing up completely. And some of the reasons as to why America tends to fall behind as far as social programs go. So, first off, if you haven't been paying attention to the news, the stimulus package was kind of a disaster. Um, no one was happy with it, particularly the $600, the $600 payments to people. They thought that was woefully, um, woefully low, and it, it is, because it doesn't, it doesn't afford an apartment. The median apartment in any state, $600, it doesn't afford rent. So, that's, first off, a big issue. And second off, like, $600 is... Pitiful compared to the bills people have to pay if they're not working, the um, issues they might have paying their rents. Uh, it won't help really stimulate the economy because it's just going to go straight to a landlord, electric company, etc., etc. And for people who are working, yeah, sure, it might pay a bill or two. People who are not working, that won't cover any of their needs, won't cover even the food. That wouldn't necessarily cover the food for a family of four. You could probably get by with $300 every couple weeks for a family of four, but it's still woefully, woefully low. Um, but it got me really thinking on why America has so many issues with social prog programs. And I did a little bit of digging, not a whole lot, but a little bit. And I've kind of formulated a little bit of a thesis as to why. So there, there are two things really that go hand in hand. Uh, the first thing is the fact that America comes from real um, Puritan stock. Many of our first settlements in our country were Puritans, that, and we still have a lot of that DNA with us. And the other thing is what I'm going to call toxic exceptionalism. And they really go hand in hand because they are in no small part the story of America. So I'm going to start with the Puritanism first. So one of the big reasons, and I actually read a really good article. So I can't remember, I can't remember who, uh, what it was, or else I put it in the description. But if I find it, I'll send it to you. Um, but it started talking about why America's social program, programs fall behind, and one of the arguments that the, this column made is the fact that in Puritanism, a work ethic and hard work is really one of the core values, one of the core virtues of it. And if you aren't working hard, you're not succeeding. And that has really kind of been in our DNA for generations now because think about how many people that you know who might not be able to work for one reason or another and some of the people around who will say oh they're just lazy they're poor because they want to be they're poor because they don't want to put their effort into it and that's just not accurate there are a multitude of reasons as to why poverty exists and laziness is really not one of them there are certainly cases in which someone is lazy, but people don't want to be poor. And in most cases, if someone is in poverty, there are societal, generational issues that have gone through their family for decades and decades and decades and generations on generations. And Puritanism doesn't really understand that because it's very much you get in what you put, you get out what you put into it. And it's something that America has continued with. Which also leads me to what I'm going to call toxic exceptionalism. Now, the theory of American ex exceptionalism is one that you might or might not be familiar with. It's, it's pretty hard to not at least be aware of it. And it's the strong belief by many American citizens and many philosopher American philosophers that Americans are exceptional 
because they're Americans. And there are a lot of reasons as to why this this theory exists. One of them is America has the longest lasting democracy in the modern world. We weren't the first, but we were the first one that really lasted for as long as we have. Uh, the first one would have probably been the Dutch, the Dutch Merchant Republic, but that was uh, overthrown by Napoleon back, um, back in the early 1800s. But America was like one of the first that made really like what Western democracy is today. And that was absolutely visionary and absolutely a major part in the development of of world politics, but it also leads to the theory of because of this in our American DNA, we are just inherently exceptional. And it's a dangerous thought. I think it's a very, very dangerous thought. It's a hilarious thought. Because Justin thinks it's hilarious, but it's dangerous because it leads really into ultranationalism. Insofar as America is always right because America is exceptional. We wouldn't do anything wrong because we're America. And Dad, we're all idiots. Sorry. And it's it's dangerous because it steps in and makes it so like if you see a societal problem like poverty or like homelessness, uh, the American exceptionalism steps in and makes people go, no, no, we should we shouldn't help them because they're not part they're not true Americans. They don't have our DNA. They they aren't exceptional like we always are because they're lazy, because they don't want to do things, because they're just trying to mooch off the government. And this leads to situations in which America is one of the lowest, um, has one of the, although we're the largest economy in the world, we have some of the highest rates of homelessness, some of the highest rates of abject poverty within, within the modern world, or not the modern, within the developed world. And these are not good things. And there are not easy solutions because nothing is ever easy but there are many solutions that we can that we can try and work to one of them probably would be like a wealth task a tax to help those who are least fortunate and least able to help themselves because again generally it's not due to any lack of moral fiber it's due to a multitude of other reasons ranging from health concerns to societal concerns to what have you and it has led to america really being in some ways an oligarchy because there's a very small group of predominantly men who control our entire country. It's your, you know, Jeff Bezos is your lobbyists, your Murdoch's, your things like that. And we as a country have really failed our most vulnerable. And I mean, I'm, I'm a corporate attorney. I absolutely see how some of the government safeguards really help out help out more of the big guys over the little guys, and it's something that we need to be concerned about, something we need to work at to try and improve. Uh, so, Tony, my question for you is, what do you? What are some of your thoughts on American exceptionalism? Do you think Americans are exceptional because we're Americans, or do you think it's a little more nuanced than that? Tony, I'll see you on Monday. Later, bro.